Okay, we're back again to talk about the first class of biologic drugs that we will use uh, on our patients. And they're first because um, they've accumulated the most patient years. Um, they've, we've used them most in, in Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. And they are monoclonal antibodies against TNF-alpha. Kim and Mel, thanks for coming back. W would you, one of you, begin by telling me, we've got to the stage where we've decided the patient needs this. What comes next? Well, they will see us in clinic to discuss the choice of, t uh, of treatment. Um, and this video is to just give you a bit of an overview about the drugs, uh, how they're given and how they're used. Um, so in the actual clinic appointments where we see you will be speaking about the drugs specifically to you and you will make a decision about which medication you're going to have. Uh, and we'll talk through that during the clinic. But for today, we'll just talk about the actual drugs, how they're given. Okay. And so for this well. for this particular clip, there are two different kinds of TNF-alpha mm -hmm. alpha and monoclonal antibodies. One is a chimeric, and it's uh, the infliximab family, and the other one is the adalimumab family. Kim, can you tell me the difference? So um, in terms of what they actually are doing to you, so we call them anti-TNF-alpha, so what that means is that they're blocking a messenger cell in our body, which is called TNF-alpha. Mm -hmm. This is responsible part of initiating the immune system and yeah. the inflammation cascade. Um, it is the inflammation and the over-response of your immune system attacking your bowel, which is causing your symptoms. So the rationale is you're giving this drug to block stuff. We're blocking that. Yeah. We're doing it relatively early on in the inflammation process. So if you imagine that the inflammation process is like a domino effect, it knocks over lots of cells, the TNF-alpha group is quite early on in the immune okay. response. So we're knocking it on the head relatively early in the yeah. immune response. But I've said there's two. That's right. What's the difference? Why do we have two? Why don't we just have one? Is one kind of uh, better than the other? Uh, they're slightly different, aren't they? There's a little bit of mousiness involved. Yes, yeah, so there is there is a slight difference between the two of them. Um, and infliximab is uh, is the chimeric one, so that has a is based on proteins of a mouse. Um, from uh, whereas hum uh, adalimumab, mm -hmm. the brand we use is Humira, but there are others. Um, that is um, not. It's not human-based, but it's uh, more easy accepted by the body is the easiest way to put it. Um, from the point of view of how effective they are and how rapidly they are effective, there is no real choice between them. It's about how they're given, and that's what the choice is. There are certain conditions where we have a preference for infliximab over Humira, but this would be explained to you in the clinic when we see you face-to-face. -face. Okay, I'm a patient. You're telling me I have a choice, really. Mm -hmm. I need a TNFL for a minute, okay, yes. for my inflammatory bowel disease. How do I make that choice and what do you tell me? So we'll tell you about the actual medications. Okay. So um, infliximab I'll do first. Mm -hmm. So infliximab is given at the moment as a drip. So you come into our infusion unit. You have a seat in our infusion, infusion unit for two hours. The drip runs over two hours. Okay. Um, you will stay with us for an hour afterwards for observation. Two weeks later, you will return for the same again. And then four weeks after that, same again. That's your what we call your induction course. And at the end of that, you should notice an improvement of your symptoms, certainly by the end of this. Some t most patients experience an, uh, an improvement between the second and third doses. So that's two weeks on. Uh, two Sorry, after two to three weeks after starting treatment, really. Some people even after the first dose, between the first and second doses. It can be very rapid response. Yeah, yeah. The infusion unit is um, just deals with infusions. It's chairs, you sit there. The nurses will come and uh, put the infusion up. You can have tea, coffee. You can play on your electronic devices, listen to music, do what you like while you're on there. Um, and you go home. You will not see a doctor unless you're unwell or unless one happens to be down there. And if you see one of us nurses, we will have a social conversation with you. There is patients around, so we can't have an in-depth conversation about your symptoms, obviously. Okay. 
After that induction period is over, you will have in infusions every eight weeks. And this is what we call your maintenance doses. And we actually speed up how we give the infusion then. We'll give it over an hour until you get to infusion number 10, which we'll then give over 30 minutes. What is new to infliximab is that we now have the ability to give you subcutaneous infliximab. So you have the first three, as I said, in hospital as the uh, induction dose. And then eight weeks later, you can have an injection at home. Uh, nurses will come out to help you teach you this, but we will be using a device like this, oh. a pen. And this is a Remsema pen. And what happens with this, and I shall demonstrate on my arm, but this is not where you normally inject. Okay. <laughs> um, you would take off the lid and then you push the device down, which activates it, and then it clicks when it's finished. Looks and that's very the simple. injection done. It is very, very simple. Okay. And this will happen every two weeks. You will get a delivery of uh, four of these, eight weeks worth of treatment. They are stored in the refrigerator, a normal domestic refrigerator between two and eight degrees. Um, and the nurse will go through exactly how to give it with you at the time when you see them. Okay. You will have to come to clinic regularly to see the consultant. Uh, um, we will be monitoring bloods, but this one you can do at home after the first infusions. Okay. So that's infliximab. That's infliximab, yes. Now, we said infliximab is the slightly mousy one. Yes. That used to be given, uh, starts as an infusion, but has the capacity to go on to these fancy subcutaneous injections. That's correct. Which look fantastic now. They do. Then there's the other type of TNF alpha yes. inhibitor, which is the adalimumab. Adalimumab, that's uh, right. So you've got something else in front of you. Yes. So... Adalimumab is the drug name and Humira is the brand name of the device we use at the moment. There are other devices and they look more similar to the infliximab pen and they might be coming around later on, but the essentials are the same for whichever drug you have. The first dose of adalimumab is um, instead of giving you more close together like we did with the infliximab, with this one you start with the injection and you start with a big dose at the beginning. So you have 80, uh, sorry, uh, these pens come in 80 milligrams or 40 milligrams. Uh -huh. So you will have two pens of 80 milligrams for your first dose. And these ones, the pens work slightly differently. Um, so you take off the lid and you take off the uh, other end, but they are labeled one and two, okay. rather helpfully. You will then, you need to hold it, you need to be able to see the window and you need to just hold it as if you're stabbing somebody and then you just press and release the device and you will see yellow coming into the window. Okay. Okay, or you count to 10, remove the device and that's it, that's you throw right. it away. So same principles really. It is. Do you keep all these in the fridge? Yes, all of these are in the fridge, everything. Okay. Um, these, they can stay out for various times. So Adalimumab can stay out of the fridge for 14 days in Flixmark can stay out of the fish for 25 days. Okay. So, uh, 28 days, I beg your pardon. So, you've got to, you can take it out of the fridge well before you're due to inject. Both of these drugs are, um, do not have citrate in it, which can make it sting. Okay? So, they actually don't sting and they're very tiny, tiny needles, and you've really got to go looking for them, but they are very small needles. Uh, so, they don't. I can't say they don't hurt at all, but they hurt very tiny amount. Okay. Going back to the adalimumab, of the rest of the doses, two weeks after you've had the big dose, you will have a sort of a medium dose of 80 milligrams for uh, two injections, possibly maybe one, depending on the brand. And then after that, you have an injection of 40 milligrams every two weeks. The nursing service comes out and does all the preparation with you and tells you how to Excellent. give it. Yeah. And we'll stay with you and visit again if you need to. Okay. Okay. Kim, does this all sound familiar to you? Yeah. Um, okay. It's a really handy way to self-medicate at home. Um, particularly with the infliximab, you have the choice of if you prefer to come into the infusion unit and continue with infusions. 
Sometimes that works better with your day-to-day life or for other patients, it might be handy to inject at home. Mm-hmm. The benefit of coming into the infusion unit is that if you are feeling under the weather, you can speak with a nurse before coming into your infusion to let them know so they can kind of guide you through whether it's appropriate to continue with that infusion. Okay. Whereas when you're at home, you may need to kind of figure that out a bit more by yourself. Okay, great. So that, in a nutshell, are the TNF-alpha families. The that we have. Yes. yes. In our next film, we'll go on to the other type of multiple antibodies that we use. Thank you, Kim and Mel. Thank you.